morning guys, Tammy Treyer, treyerwilderness.com. I'm late, <laughs> very late, but I'm here. I wasn't going to be here this morning. Um, I've been dealing with some health struggles, uh, just been very depleted. Good morning, George. I've I've just been really really depleted and exhausted. It Monday it took absolutely everything I had to get done what needed to get done. Good morning, Miss Tammy. And today after um being exposed to some heavy toxins yesterday, I woke up and I was extremely swelled up. My face was all swelled up and I spent the morning soaking and just uh being good to myself. Uh just trying to uh, revive myself and I was not going to come on here I just didn't feel that I would be of help to anybody and uh, I had to go for a short walk and uh, it kind of revived me and I thought maybe by being on here today I might be able to help others that are in a sim similar situation yes good afternoon it is afternoon isn't it Tammy <laughs> hello and hello Charles how am I doing? I am, I'm hanging in there, Charles. Um, and, and that's what we got to all do is hang in there and keep trusting and keep looking to the right resources to regroup ourselves. Um, there's just been a lot going on here. I've been sharing a lot with you guys. So I just hit a point of total physical and mental exhaustion and was trying my best to cater to that and, uh, not push as much but I thought what I would do today is just jump on here um, and do my devotions with you guys uh, and it's really funny when I read what today's devotion is I just kind of glimpsed at it because I didn't get a chance to do my devotions this morning it's pretty funny and pretty right on and I want to just in, in the event that Tiffany watches this um, Tiffany just found our channel on YouTube a little bit ago and uh, she has a uh, breast implant illness also and uh, found our channel and was encouraged by our channel and I just want to thank her for encouraging me to jump on here today. It was her message to me that really was the icing on the cake for me to jump on and, and to share myself at a weak moment. Um, not that I was afraid to do that. I just want to be an encouragement to others and not um, a deterrent to other people. But it's good for people to know that we all are dealing with stuff. We are all, um, you know, we all go through moments and that we can be a light to others even when we don't really feel like we have enough energy to push forward. Uh, thank you, Charles. So this is called Finishing Strong in Ministry. And although this is talking about, you know, like a pastor in the ministry, I feel like God has put me in this position. You know, none of this was our intention. Being on live video was never anything that I had would have dreamt up. Uh, it intimidated me to death just because you can't edit. and. I'm just a very animated person and live video for an animated person can be pretty scary. But anyway, I'm here and God opened so many doors for our family online and it just wasn't something that we intended to do. And I feel like this is our ministry. We are not, um, you know, I'm not a, a pastor of the church, but I think that we all are called, we all are called to be disciples of his word and, and to share the gospel with others. And sometimes that means sharing that in our lowest moments, not necessarily sharing that in our highest moments. You know, we can be a light to others in many different ways. And sometimes in our weakest moments, you know, God can use us the most. So uh, this is really pertinent. Um, it's the verse today is 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have finished the race. I do love that verse. Um, I might go into that in the Bible then and read some more on that. But you know, I've talked all along about having endurance and um, 
and, and perseverance and even in your low moments you know Monday like I said I felt like I had to grab myself by the tuft of the hair and just drag myself around all day it was just like it was painful it was painful just trying to accomplish things I was so exhausted and yesterday was a little better um, but then when I woke up this morning it was so swelled up I knew today would be a little bit of a challenge but I I like a challenge and I want to persevere through this so this says did you know that over half of those who enter the ministry quit before retirement why there are lots of reasons. Here is one of them. They discover that great, that great revelation comes with a thorn. The Apostle Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, says, To keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This is today's message. This is just so awesome. I love how he talks to me and very truthfully and honestly. I needed that today. And it says that therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That's 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. Pastor, there are 168 hours in your week. The hour you spend on, in the pulpit on Sunday morning showcases you in the areas of your gifting and strength. So your challenge will always be remember, to remember that it is God's word and God's power, not yours, that changes lives and gets the job done. Notice what Paul said, to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh. Paul's thorn came in the form of weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties. What's your thorn? You can only stand strong before people if you discipline yourself to spend time before God in prayer and Bible study. That's how to stay effective and finish strong in the ministry. You can only stand strong before people if you discipline yourself and spend time with God and I greatly believe that you know my choice of not being on here today would have been to go find a quiet place and sit and spend time with God because that is what renews me when I'm in this place and you know our thorns can be so many different things my thorn is oftentimes and has been my illness um, it can be our circumstances and our situation and you know today I was actually gonna speak on marriage that's actually something that I'm probably gonna do next week um, but you know going through these tough times really does build your endurance and it builds your perseverance and it keeps you strong but you got to remember too you are human and you will tire out and that's where I found myself this week is just thoroughly exhausted. I shared with you guys that over the last couple weeks, everything that needed to get done was very pressing and required equally of my time and, and all had deadlines of yesterday. So I really was forced to push myself and I had to push myself more than I have um, all along since my illness. So it was very challenging. And I'm not surprised I'm in this place, but the enemy also utilizes us in this place, uh, tries to put us in this place, and then utilize this place. Um, this place being an area of exhaustion, and when you're tired, he always knows he can get his footholds in there and, and try to hang on tight. He will use people close to us, around us. Um, those that we have to interact with to drag us down and to um, sometimes make things more difficult. And I'm, I'm really blessed to have such a good family and a family that understands, a family that you know sees me in a different place and, and knows that it's not normal for me and takes that time to pray for me and to help lift me up. I'm also blessed to have such amazing prayer warriors surrounding me that lift me and, and love me for who I am and love me in my weakest moments and, and love me when I'm being persecuted. And we all are going to hit that place 
where we are in total exhaustion and feel that we cannot move on, go on, and that we, we are just just in a low place, just in a tired place. But I want to encourage you today to find great strength in, in the Word. Um, I want to go to that passage, uh, 2 Timothy 4, 7, because I do, I really, really love this passage. And something else I mentioned last week that I want to mention to you today is having a really good arsenal of Bible verses at the ready. Um, so that when you are in different places that you don't have to seek them in the Bible, but that you can go directly to your, your list and, and pull pertinent Bible verses out that will help you throughout your days and throughout your journey. Okay. I fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. That is just such an awesome, awesome verse. And it's something to hang on to. You know, when we, when we get in these low places, we have the choice as in everything to choose to fight the good fight. And fighting the good fight means that we are fighting it through the word and that we are using the word to strengthen us, using God to strengthen us, and that we are, we have remained faithful, that when we are in these low places, we don't end up in self-pity, and that we don't end up in um, states of depression, and, and uh, just that woe is me place. That is certainly not my nature. And that's why I struggle in these places because when I'm just this exhausted and there's things to do, I do try and as I've been preaching that it's really important to take care of ourselves. So when you're in this place of, of lowness and of just uh, exhaustion, to remember to take time for yourself and to rest in ways that you know will um, help you, whether that's taking a nap, laying flat for 15 minutes and just giving your body a rest, going back to bed because you are just that exhausted. Uh, like this morning, I soaked um, and, and gave my body a break and nourished my body. And, and knowing these things and knowing what you need, not only physically, but spiritually. You know, when you can go to the Word and seek the power of the Word, there is so much gain there. And like I said, that's what I would have done on my own, but I decided to bring you guys with me. This is not our normal Facebook Live, um, and hopefully you guys will gain from this. Uh, and it's good to see, I think, that we all, we all struggle, we all um, deal with different things and go through different things and when you go through a struggle for a long time it can really wear you down and I, I know that firsthand both with illness with financial struggles with um, lots of pressures and stresses and we're all human and we are all going to weaken to those things and when you can find strength in the word and regroup yourself that way and also have good Christian people to rely on and to fall back on, that is just so extremely powerful. And I am very blessed in that way. And that's why another reason why I decided to jump on here today and just hope that I can be a light to somebody that might be in the same shoes or struggling today. This Tiffany that reached out is very, very sick. I'd like that you keep her in prayer. Um, I know where she's at. I know that sickness and I know that place where it really feels like your next stage is six feet under. Um, it's, it's a really rough place to be when you are that, that deathly ill. And uh, she has surgery upcoming, so just keep her in your prayers. Um, I'd also like to ask that you keep my friend Starry in your prayers as well. Um, she's such a neat and amazing spirit and she is, um, she was going on the road to minister. She felt really called to do that. She was gifted in RV 
and she was traveling. She finally went out on her first road trip and uh, went from Georgia to Wisconsin, and then she was going to go from Wisconsin back here to Idaho. And uh, she got detoured in Wisconsin because the camper that she was gifted ended up with extreme black mold. And I know how firsthand how toxic that is also. And her audience rallied together around her. It is just so amazing. And they got um, Prepstetter Bob involved. If you're not familiar with Prepstetter Bob, go to YouTube and search for Prepstetter Bob. And you will find his channel. It's also the Self-Reliance Roadshow. And they have a ministry also where they are going on the road. They will be leaving October 1st. And they are going on the road for seven months going on a particular route and we'll be helping other homesteaders um, along the way that are in need so they are kind of their ministry um, is basically being good Samaritans and uh, they are also in need but if you guys some many of you I know we do the same thing we tithe not only to the church but to those in need and I'd like to just um, put this out there. Starry no longer has a home. She cannot stay at her family's in Wisconsin um, for health reasons. And she is still feeling like she is being called on the road. She also is dealing with um, multiple myeloma cancer right now as well, which is an incurable cancer. And Prepstetter Bob is actually putting together, he did a live video, I believe it was on Sunday, and they needed uh, a certain amount of funding and they actually got more than that. Uh, they are going to put together a bus for her, uh, for her home instead of using an RV or camper, which aren't as heavy duty um, as the buses. Um, Perhaps that her Bob and his wife live in a bus. They, they uh, remodeled a bus and made that their living quarters. And um, Perhaps that her Bob has they have their son's wedding and and they are leaving October 1st and he is squeezing in and ministering to Starry and helping her to get her bus um, it, it's a basically an empty bus and he is going to make a living quarters out of it for her repurposing some of the things they can from her camper and then purchasing new what they need to get this going and the other thing that Starry needs is she with her being sick with her having cancer she is needing to eat all organic raw foods and she is rebuilding her strength she's doing amazing and God is working miracles in her life but I know how expensive that is I know how hard it is to maintain that when you are going through a rough time so if you feel led to help her you can do so by um, gifting her through PayPal. It's starryhilder at gmail.com is her PayPal email. And it's S-T-A-R-R-Y-H-I-L-D-E-R -R -E at gmail.com. I do believe I put that in the description below, but I'm not recalling. Um, so double check that. I think it's down there. And Prep Stutter Bob, you can go to his channel. Again, it's a self-reliance road show. Um, and I'm sure you can find a link on his Prep Stutter Bob channel also. They also have a website. Um, but I would also encourage you to tithe to his ministry as well because he and his wife are funding this on their own. Um, so there's a lot of people that are fun, you know, gifting $10 here, $10 there to help them with fuel to make their... Um, season trip and this is their second season you can follow their first season um, but they have such good hearts and they really are doing everything they can for Starry and I just think it's so amazing and I wanted to share that with you um, another thing that you can do when you're in these low places is pray for others um, be able to serve others but also when you're in these places don't be afraid to just Seek God and take care of yourself. That's something that people need to learn is that caring for themselves is not a bad thing. When I am done with this today, I am going airplane mode and I am spending the day with my son and my husband and I am 
going off the internet and off the airwaves and I might be doing that more often because I'm really feeling the need when I'm not scheduled for something to just step away from everything. Um, my boy will be leaving soon and he's in the middle of doing some studying for some testing that will be upcoming. So I've been helping him with that and we've really just been trying to spend as much time together as a family and it has been just really wonderful. We had a great weekend. Sunday was just so enjoyable just doing things that we enjoy doing. I wanted to show you something today and I totally forgot about it. It's in the house. Notice I'm outside. There's no sunshine, which I can, I can deal with, but the temperatures are that perfect fall weather where I'm sit, able to sit out here. My, my phone is not cooking in the sun, so I'm able to be out here and enjoy this with you guys. But um, just take time for yourself. There is a there comes a time when you just truly need to regroup yourself and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's part of why I wanted to come on here today too is to remind you guys when you hit these disheveled places, you know, we all push through a lot of different things. You've seen the mountain man and I and my family just pushing through this year. First, pushing really hard to remodel our home. Hello, Angela. And get the get the house ready for sale and and pushing to get it sold and and then I believe I did share with you uh, the mountain man and I both got, we asked God to share with us um, both the same message so that we know that we are following his lead and that it is him speaking to us and um, not this past Thursday but the Thursday before the mountain man got Hebrews 615 given to him, which is a verse um, in the Bible when it's talking about Abram and Sarah and, and how they should have waited and they needed to have been patient and wait on God. And my Bible devotional that day was the exact same thing. It was, I just love when God does that stuff. It was very, very powerful, but also very confirming for us that we are in wait mode now. And what we are waiting on, we don't know. We don't know what we're waiting on, but God is telling us to wait. God is telling us not to take things into our own hands and to um, go outside of his will. He's telling us to wait. So that confirmation was pretty powerful. And I shared with you that our propane was down to a whisper. And I also shared with you that, you know, we could be, we are resilient and we shuffle and, and um, know how to be resilient and improvise. Well, we've had things for sale and they weren't moving. And suddenly after that, the mountain man's big welder sold. And we got enough money to pay our propane debt that we had and be able to prepay propane enough for this winter. So that gets delivered next Wednesday. In addition to that, our firewood was not um, as plentiful as we would feel comfortable with because we know our winters can be hard here. And searching and gathering firewood in snowy weather just makes it very difficult. Rainy weather, and it's really nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, the mountain boy just went breezing past. Anyway, um, it's, uh, it's important for us to be able to have firewood and, and have that comfort. And it's just something that we focus on. So we went out and got some more firewood. We need to get a little bit more. Um, but that has given us another level of comfort. Uh, good morning, Miss Courtney. And then our food cache is something that we normally... Um, just keep rotated and replenished, but we've actually had to live out of that. So our food cash is low. That's still low. Um, but we have other things that are for sale, and God is blessing us with movement on those things. So when we choose to follow God's will and we listen to what he's telling us, you you will see that's funny good afternoon yes I keep forgetting it's not morning we're in the afternoon because I'm like really dragging today. <laughs> but good whatever it is I'm so glad to have you guys joining me but you know God told us to wait and we and 
we have to honor that. Um, I don't know if our if our house doesn't sell by winter if we will still have a home to call our own. We don't know that. Um, but it's something that we can't change. It's something that we cannot alter. We are doing everything in our power. So we were told to wait. So that's what we're doing. And you know, for some people that could be a really rough place to be. For us, it was like a relief almost that we just at least were given direction. And, and that we, we knew then that instead of focusing so hard on, on pushing to sell, that we needed to refocus and just wait on God and focus on the things that we could. And, and like I said, we couldn't have changed anything with the propane prior to that welder selling. And going after firewood is just us um, devoting energy towards that. And finding the time and God opened those doors too so the key thing here is no matter how you feel no matter what you're going through no matter what the struggles are if we are willing to seek him seek his word and be willing to listen to his word you will see the so many blessings so many miracles so many things presented and open up in front of you and and that is what my friend Starry is seeing right now. Good morning, Miss Kelly. Good afternoon, Miss Kelly. <laughs> I'm so programmed to say it that way. Um, what is really unique with Starry that um, I just love is how she and us are paralleling. Although our struggles are very different, um, what we are walking through is very much the same and um, you know with varying illness and just the different struggles God is walking us through similar lessons and similar paths and similar teachings and it's been really really awesome um, to be able to communicate together and just to see how God is working in us and to um, see how God takes us to places to humble us too it was her situation right now, you know, she is in the same shoes we are. We feel we are being very led to teach and guide and, and help others. And it's our nature to be in that, in that position. And when the shoes are turned and people are blessing us and gifting us and helping us, it's a really hard place to be. We dealt with that back in 2016. And... Um, it was a really, really hard lesson because you don't realize when you're a giver um, how hard it is to humble yourself to receive. And, and we are called to do that. And that's where she was. She was really feeling so in turmoil over the position she was in and feeling like she was being given too much. But the thing is, when we don't receive willingly and we don't receive well we are keeping people from being able to do what she and us do all the time and that is being able to be the giver and be the helper and and we got to learn to be in that in that seat and 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 accept what God is doing and God has really shifted things for her and she is really it's just amazing to see, like I said, her community reached out to Prepstetter Bob and pulled him into the situation because she was just in such a dire situation. She is like I am. She can't just rent up any place. Um, toxins affect her. Mold affects her. I have to imagine that the EMFs are affecting her as well. Um, when you're in a, a, such a sick place, I've learned very up close and personal how all these outside things affect the body and how you don't realize they affect the body until you are away from them. And she and I both living off the grid, our bodies, your bodies become accustomed to being away from all of those toxins that most of the world lives in every day. So it's, it's really uh, detrimental to her health to be away from those things and to be in a clean healthy environment and with her dealing with cancer naturally 
it is of utmost importance that she is in a clean, healthy environment. Plus, the Wisconsin winters are very rough on her body. That's why they moved from Wisconsin to begin with to Idaho. Um, so if you could please keep her in your prayers, I would really appreciate it. And like I said, if you feel led to gift, um, her PayPal email is below. And Prepstetter Bob has a fabulous ministry that you can also donate to. I don't have his PayPal link in there, but I will add that after we're, we're done here. Um, but our prayer list is long. If you could look below, you will see the prayer list in the description. Um, I mentioned Tiffany. Angela and her family also need prayers, as well as Diana and her family, Kelly and her family. I want to mention that Miss Courtney that's on here is um, due for a new MRI um, to check the brain tumor that she has had since infancy. And um, last November, December, they were in Arizona and had were able to have surgery on what they considered to be inoperable previously. And they were able to get everything but a very small piece of the tumor. And um, we are praying hard, we have been praying hard that that tumor that was left in there, just that small residual piece, just is gone. So. She gets anxious when it comes time for these MRIs as the rechecks, and I can't blame her one bit. But if you would please lift her in prayer. Um, we were lifting them very heavily when they were traveling to Arizona last, last fall. And uh, I'd just like to ask that you keep them in prayer now as well and your prayers of healing for them. And uh, also Tammy and her family are transitioning big time as well, like ours. And... Uh, Austin will be gone off to school. I will be sharing more details on that. I'd like to do a live video with him on that, so we'll share more on that when he and I can sit together and share that with you. Um, we haven't gotten his actual leave date yet. Uh, we will be getting that in the next couple of weeks. So um, he should be leaving probably within the next four weeks to head uh, to school. So very excited about that. You guys have been messaging here, so let me see. Um, afternoon, glad Courtney checked back to see if you'd indeed come on later. Yeah, I couldn't get my act together this morning. When you watch the whole thing, you'll see that. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was afraid that I would be a detriment to people instead of inspiring and helpful, but I think I've got it together. Um, we've always been givers, and it is hard to humble yourself to receive, but have been blessed many times through our medical issues with Courtney. Yeah, it's just really awesome and you know it's it's bad when you're a bad receiver and we were that in 2016 to a degree until we understood what we were doing. Um it just is such an awkward place and a weird feeling to to be gifted in and that and we we have to learn to be better receivers. Angela says, we have an elderly couple in our church. The wife is younger and sole caregiver to the frail husband. She constantly resists, oh, she constantly resists help, but she finally told me I can do grocery shopping for her and help clean. Now I pray I can be cons consistent and continue to help. Awesome. Yeah, you know, it's just funny. I think society holds us back from wanting to receive that I think that in our minds you know we like to be givers and we like to help other people but when you're in that seat where you're actually receiving you know society makes you feel like you know you shouldn't receive in that you know you're you're there's other people that need it more I think is what I'm getting at and what I'm trying to say and, and you know, with us, it's really funny. You know, there is a fella here ha who has offered to help Glenn a couple times, physically help Glenn. And it's not that he doesn't like help. And it's not that he has to do everything himself. But he's so used to just rolling by the seat of his pants. We just are constantly just moving. And, and we... we because of our weather and the way our homestead is, sometimes we shuffle from one project to the other. We never really know what we're going to do. Something breaks, so then we shift to something else. And it's kind of hard 
to in our minds to be able to fathom fitting somebody else into that equation and how they can help us because we don't really know how things are going to go. And I, I said to this fellow, I said, you know, I'm going to work harder at getting us to uh, learn how to incorporate, you know, him into things because he too really wanted to be able to help us. And Angela said it's a pride thing and and you feel guilty. Yeah, it is it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's that I think more that we felt guilty for people helping us. I don't I don't know how to explain it. It's just a really weird feeling, you know, and 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 it is somewhat pride, you know, that we like to be the one on on the uh Starry put it well. She didn't like being in the limelight. She didn't like being, you know, that, that she's used to being the one being able to give and to inspire and to encourage. And it just felt so awkward to her to be in the limelight. And, and, you know, she didn't want people to, uh, feel they had to give to her but what she didn't realize is that and we didn't either is that people wanted to be able to gift us and to help us in our situation and it is it's a humbling process and we have to go through it and we have to you know God breaks us down in different scenarios you know even with me being so exhausted this week you know God was breaking me down to a place where I needed to just rest and that was okay. And sometimes we don't handle that well either, being told that we need to slow up and just rest and, and just take care of ourselves or just not do anything or just walk away from the internet, you know, whatever whatever it is. Good afternoon, Gudrun. Kelly says, Mike is the same way. I have to remind him to ask because I often cannot help him in a way he truly needs. Yeah, and... I know it's just so funny it's just so funny how we operate and and sometimes I don't know so much that it's a pride thing or even stubbornness it's just that like with with Glenn it's not that he he doesn't want the help he could use the help he would be grateful for the help it's just in his mind he can't imagine how he would incorporate somebody because of the way we do things it's just weird I don't know but we definitely need to learn to hear the Holy Spirit and God working in us and breaking us down and chipping away at us that we don't realize we do have prideful notions and that we do have stubborn notions and 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 that we do feel guilt in receiving and we shouldn't. You know, when someone wants to gift us and we don't allow them, we're keeping them from that great feeling we have in being able to help others. So, Angela, that's awesome. And, you know, God... God gave you that little foothold to get in there and be able to help them. And, and through that, you know, maybe this woman will see how, how much of a help it can be, even something as simple as that. And I have to imagine, you know, like, like for Starry and for us, there were things that it was a lot easier to give, to, to have people help us with. Stuff like that is a great way to be able to help others. So let me see here. Angela said people are so busy in today's society that most people don't make time to really help others because we keep ourselves so busy. Yeah, and you know, I talk about that all the time. You know, there's it's a shame when we're that busy that we can't see an avenue where we could be helpful to others or that we are so help, uh, so busy that we we don't make the time to help others where that is something we have chosen to do with our situation is that even though things were ugly and really tough and this year was a really, really rough year, we've used this year to take time to serve others. Because when you're going through the hard stuff, serving other people can be a really good distraction. It can be really good at rebuilding and renewal for yourself. Um, because you get that um, gratification of helping somebody else in a rough spot. And the thing is, we all are going through hard stuff. You know, everybody's stuff is different. Everybody's heart is different. It looks different. But when you know that you have somebody there, you know, helping someone sometimes can just be checking on them to let, you know, let them know that you're, you still love them, that you're loving up on them, you know, you know, we're going through a hard time, but we still care kind of thing, you know, 
it's amazing the different ways that we can find to help people. You know, making meals for people, doing their grocery shopping, cleaning for people, you know, reaching out to people. And it's really important. You know, that's what's really cool about what Prepstetter Bob is doing is that his ministry is being that good Samaritan. And I love the beginning of his videos on his Self-Reliance Roadshow. Um, when he did the video, initial video on Starry, there was a person back in the times of Jesus, you know, laying on the road with his animal nearby and people just walking past him and over him and totally ignoring him in the middle of the road. And, you know, that's what so much of us do today is we walk past people. We don't take the time to see people and, and see their needs because we're so busy caught up in our own. And in the beginning of that video, then, it finally shows somebody after so many people walked over him that somebody stopped and helped him up and gave him water. And, you know, that's something we've been greatly focusing on. You know, we've been busy trying to get this house sold and get it prepared. But on our, on our travels to get materials, we've run into people that were broken down alongside of the road. One of them was a woman in, a, in an old pickup truck. And, and she had no idea what to do. And, you know, we stopped. Um, we helped her to see if we could get the vehicle running. And then we ended up towing her. Doing those things is really important. The other thing that's really awesome is when we can, you know, we are called to help people. We are also called to gift people and not do it um, in, in a way that we are calling out ourselves, you know, to make ourselves look good by doing something for somebody. So sometimes, and we've, we've received gifts like this already, and I know Starry is right now, where somebody just pops something in the mail and gifts her or sticks something in her pocket. You know, I've seen, I've been in situations, not for us, but we've seen it through other people where they were in church and somebody hugged them and stuck something in their pocket while they were at church. Somebody did. And they got home and found just what they needed in their pocket to pay the bill that was due. So, it's pretty amazing when there's so many creative ways and we are so creative in on Facebook and and the things we post if we would be just as creative in our ways of being there and wanting to help people I think I know society would be such a different place whoa you guys have been messaging this is good um, let me see here Angela says, my husband has the same trouble because of how the projects go. Yeah, it's just weird sometimes. It's not that we're trying to be rude or anything. It's just our projects are weird and, and timing is weird. Like sometimes when we were working on the house, we had to work around rain. So we would be, you know, planing boards at weird hours. And when the sun's shining too, that's the other funny thing. We have to work around the sun and the rain and all that stuff. So our, our projects are just different and weird. But we got to try. We got to try to be humble receivers and and humble gifters. Um totally get that. We are the same and it's being it's being set in our ways. Yeah. Good afternoon, Carrie. Let's see here. Angela says she asked me to buy six bags of shredded lettuce that would have cost over $15. I bought two heads of lettuce for three and chopped it instead. I had trouble figuring out how to shred it, but I think I figured it out. Use a plastic knife. Um, I know that sounds funny, but when you uh, shred lettuce with a butcher knife, the metal actually causes it to start... Um, decaying or, or spoil faster. So when you're um, doing heads of lettuce, always use a plastic knife. Uh, learned that a long time ago, but that is really awesome of you. And that's that's just it. You know, we can save people money by helping out. And, and I am sure that woman is going to be so grateful and so gracious for you taking the time to help her. And I'm sure that she, because she's learning how to do it, 
you'll have more opportunity. So that's really awesome. Sometimes there are those of us who give and give and give and just need some downtime as well. Serving is draining as well. Mike and I are EMTs and it's a huge commitment and very stress-filled service service volunteer. Yes. You know, you know, you know me very well, Kelly, and there is a lot of truth in that too. Oh, my battery is dying and I don't have the cord. I might have to take this inside. Um there's a lot of truth in that. Serving can be very draining, especially when you're going through a tough time of your own. So be sure that you are looking out for your energy levels and your health and your family while you're serving. Because that could be a good bit of the reason why I was so depleted on Monday. Um, I'm going to try to move this inside, so bear with me because I don't want the battery to die on me especially since you guys have a bunch of comments. So bear with me here as I maneuver. I've also got a dog in heat, so my house is quite crazy. One dog crying and one dog probably taking over my bed. All right, give me a second here as I maneuver. Okay. All right, let's see if I can do this. Now, let's put some light on the subject, get my power cord, and hope that my dog does not knock this over. Okay. Well, I ended up being on longer than I anticipated. This is good. You guys are renewing me again. I just was really not feeling well this morning, but I'm glad I did this because you guys are sharing some really good stuff. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Sorry about that. All right, Angela said, I left the store last night at 10 p.m. <gasps> Sorry. Uh, there was a homeless person huddled in the little bus shelter. The rain was blowing sideways and it was so cold. I felt afraid to help, but I did pray. I wondered what would happen if I stopped and prayed with them. Well, remember, dog is going to knock over my stand. That is awesome of you. And, and sadly, we do have to be careful today um, in regard to helping because there's a lot of gang things that are put in place. Like when you're helping someone alongside of the road, um, gangs are utilizing those situations uh, that look innocent where there's people hiding in places. And, you know, the homeless people, you don't know if they're drug or alcohol addicts. You know, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. And it's a real shame because I have that heart too when I see homeless people to want to do something and help. Um, but the first thing we got to do is always take care of ourselves and be cautious. Um, we have made a family pact that I don't stop specifically. Um, unless I have one of the guys with, if I don't know the people. Um, if it's a woman alongside of the road, I will pull up and make sure she's okay or see if I can call, but I don't get out of the truck. Um, you just, we have to protect ourselves. And I am always packing. Um, but in certain situations, um, you know, if you're helping somebody in the grocery store, but don't put yourself in, in a bad situation. Um, I can tell you this though, if we stop and take the time to pray for people like that, we can really change people's lives. And if there are safe situations that you can do that, um, kudos to you because that is a really powerful thing that we can offer somebody. You know, um, when we see homeless, um, we, we took bags, I don't remember how many pounds of apples we took to the homeless people um, the one Christmas. And I would have loved to have done a hot meal, but we couldn't afford it. But I didn't want to give them something that they could turn around and use inappropriately. You know, you don't want to just give them money that they end up going and getting another bottle. You know, to, to give them a meal, to give them something that will nourish them, um, to give them a Bible. 
You know, those are things that we can do that could really nurture um, someone in those positions. And, you know, not everybody in that position is in that position um, because they are bad people. We've got to remember that, you know. If we were to lose our home before winter because of not selling it, we would in essence be homeless as well. So you got to look at things and just be careful and protect yourself while wanting to help people. Had that happen several times and the cards were signed, love Jesus. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Yes. Um, that's, that's how we were, we were given a love gift and it's just really amazing. You know, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling to both gift that way and receive that way. And this dog is going to knock this thing over. He's pacing cause he's lovesick. Um, Angela said, speaking of dogs, fleas are the worst this year. My dogs are all eaten up. Uh, good afternoon, Chad. Yeah, we have gr we don't have fleas or ticks, but we have grasshoppers. The number of grasshoppers here this year are just insane. Angela says, my neighbor has been having tons of drama. It's been dangerous for our family. My response has been fear and almost hatred. Drama is the worst. I, I shared something on Facebook yesterday. I'll see if I can find it. You know, and, and that's where we gotta, you know, sadly, we, we have to learn the different ways we can help people. There are some people we can physically help. There are some people that we can gift. There's other people that we need to stay miles away from and just pray for. And one of the best ways to be able to realize that is when you are helping somebody and you start to feel anxiety or feelings like you, like Angela mentioned, and and it's disrupting your health and your fam, your own family's dynamics. Then, that is the enemy interceding, and that is a situation where prayer is one of the most powerful things we can offer those people. Um, some people, sadly, love drama. They love their own drama. They love making drama. They love living in drama. This girl here, I cannot be around other people's drama. I cannot be caught up in drama. I don't, I don't like negativity. As soon as I am in those situations, I need to sever those ties and pull myself away from those situations because it's not healthy. And since I've been sick, I feel it so much faster than ever before. And when you feel that, it's just time, it's time to separate yourself from that, you know? And when, when people play games, you know, and it's, you know, you're trying to help and they're playing games, the only thing we can do is sever our ties and just pray. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Oh, um, afternoon. I'm so confused, but you guys love me anyway, and I'm so grateful for that. What I shared last night is my whole mindset has changed. I don't even have the energy to do certain things and be around people anymore. I'm just at the point in my life where if something feels like it's draining me or fighting with my peace of mind and happiness, I'm not dealing with it at all. And that's, that's where I'm at. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that because some people you just can't help and coming to terms with that can be difficult for those of us that enjoy helping and, and, and giving, but when it starts to drain and deplete and cause negativity in you, in you or your family and it doesn't feel right, there's a reason it doesn't feel right and that's where we need to just, you know what, you tried what we can continue to do is pray. There is great power in prayer, but you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that's something that, you know, you've got to walk through too. Let me see here. Uh, 
Good deal, Angela. She said, but then I started praying for him. Then the Lord started urging me to give him a Bible. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Where did it go from there? Because, you know, there's power in the word and there's healing in the word. And, you know, you never know what kind of seeds we're planting. We can try. And all we can do is pray that the seeds we have planted will sometime take root. And, and that's what we, that's, that's all we can do. Um, Tammy says, we have a ton of grasshoppers as well, more than I have seen before. They ate so much of our green foliage. I believe it. It's weird when we go for walks, it's like you have to like protect yourself because they're just like flying up at your face and they're hitchhiking on the dogs. I've never seen grasshoppers like that before either. And it's kind of weird I started saying a while ago that I could sense that fall was coming and um, I couldn't help but think of the ant movie, the kids Disney ant movie where the grasshoppers were coming and, and the ants were panicking because the grasshoppers were coming to get their, um, make sure their winter storages were full and it's just what it made me think of that I don't know if we're going to have a really harsh winter or, or what that means. I've never seen so many um, Grasshoppers, here we go. Kelly says, grasshoppers are thick here too. At night, the posts in our pasture are covered until they are black with them. Wow, that is thinking crazy. I will say this though. I was writing the other day and I was able to have the door open and I was sitting here working at the table all day and all I heard was the crickets making noise and that just seemed out of character too. It was all day long, not just at night, it was all day long. And that was just such an awesome, awesome, relaxing, comforting sound. Some people are just toxic and need our prayers and we need to keep our distance. Yeah, it's a great truth and when you hit that point, you know it. You just know it. It's time to walk away. It's time to sever the ties and it's time to just pray and, and you know, because like I said, when it starts to affect your health and, and your personality, who you are, it's not, it's not a wholesome thing. You're not gifting anybody. You're, you're, it's actually a detriment to your own health and it's the enemy trying to seep in. The enemy's already got control of them and they are not realizing it they are or they're enjoying where they're at in their own misery there are so many people like that i you know it's part why i had to walk away from my own family i pray for them every day but they're unhealthy they are just unhealthy to be around um angela says so we took him over a gospel of john and he started crying and said that's just what he needed now we need to follow up and i'm not sure how well angela we can all pray for him. If you want to share his name here, we can all pray. And um, maybe what you can do, the first thing that just popped in my mind right now is give him some nourishing um, resources that might be of help to him. Um, there's a lot of really good podcasts. I like Todd White. Um, Joe McGee is really good. Um, Oh, there's another one too. And there, uh, like our church's sermons are online and Lifeline is another one that is really, really good. Um, I could put links down below for those podcasts. Um, the Hour of Power is also a really good one. Um, gosh. But give him resources that are accessible to him without you having to be there and um, keep checking on him and keep loving up on him from a distance maybe just to make sure that you're not caught in the drama but um, we would be happy to pray for him that is just awesome you know and it's awesome to see that we are able to be a light to others and to help people plus just how we live life from day to day can make such a difference in other people. Them seeing maybe you walking through a really rough struggle of your own but trying to help others or just that you're walking the walk and talking the talk. You're not just a part-time Christian that on Sundays you just do your best and the rest of the week you know you schlep it all off. 
So how we walk it out plays a huge role in things. I cannot tolerate drama and negative things, Kelly said, yeah. I mean, it just so affects my health and I just totally have to walk away from it. And that's that's not been my nature throughout my life, but I'm realizing that had it been, my life would have been a lot easier. So learning that skill and learning the need to do that, that there is a time to help, but there's a time that we need to walk away and help ourselves. You know, you can only, you can only do so much and, um, those kind of people just need lots of prayer. Uh, who was this? Angela says that was just about five days ago. I think my husband needs to follow up. I'm not comfortable doing it, but he keeps himself so busy that he probably won't have a chance. Well, we'll pray and, and I totally get that. And you know what guys, that uncomfortable feeling is the Holy Spirit. Listen to it. Um, when the Holy Spirit is trying to communicate things to us, we need to definitely be willing to hear that and to listen to that. And also, you know what, too? Um, take time to pray about certain situations. Before, we, we as a family have decided this year that before we commit to anything, we sit as a family and we pray about it before we move. And then God will open doors if things are meant to be. If he doesn't, then we pray about them and, and pray for those people and do things from afar. We have learned last year and this year um, that it's really important to protect ourselves as a family. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I feel that especially those of us that are really walking it out and really trying to be a light, that the enemy will use all kinds of tactics to get to us um, and people. And we need to, <laughs> we need to be in tune with God, be willing to listen to God, be willing to take God's instructions. And you know, sometimes he will lead you into certain situations where we can be a help, but then he will also quickly take you out of those situations because you've done enough and we've just experienced that ourselves. But we need to be in tune with ourselves, in tune with God, and, and in tune with situations. We need to help, but we also need to be careful in our helping that we are not harming ourselves, harming our families, or putting ourselves in, in bad positions. Um, Starry stopped Angela and prayed over a homeless woman when she was traveling, but she was with her friend. And I highly recommend that if you do anything where you are involving yourself with people that are of question, whether it's alongside of the road or whether it's you know a, a homeless person like that, to do it that there's at least two of you so that you're not putting yourself in a bad spot. But Starry and her, I think it was her friend at that time, not her sister, that prayed over this woman and the lady just reduced to tears. You know, we can be a light and we can be a help to people, but we do need to protect ourselves and be careful. So I see that Angela said the fellow's name is Brian, so we need to be um, praying for Brian. And, and praying that he is gaining more and more from the gift of the Bible and the gospel. Um, Alistair Begg has good sermons as well. Awesome. I will have to check that out. I've never heard of them. And thank you for sharing, Miss Tammy. Um, Angela says, my adult son thinks our kids are in danger from him. He's never done anything to us, but he's very volatile. And you know what? In that situation, you just keep your kids at bay. You know, you help him from afar. Um... Austin has been in a, a situation that we had to protect him from also. Um, it just wasn't, it wasn't a healthy situation. And um, getting, protecting our children and our families um, over helping others is the first concern. And, and we've just got to be careful. So you know that he's volatile. You just, you keep your kids at bay. Um, you know, teach them too to pray for him. Um, 
that's one of the most valuable things I think we've taught the mountain boy is that, you know, despite not being able to necessarily physically help people, one thing we can always do is pray for them. And sadly, with the mountain boy, he's had to experience that with people really close to him. And uh, it's neat to see our adult children grow. Uh, he has got such a good head on his shoulders and such an amazing perspective on life. And I thank God for that. Um, but to get our children to that place, we need to protect them. So, and I know you are certainly protecting your children, but it's, it's, a, it, it's a concern and it's a, something to be aware of, something to pay attention to. Um, you know, people... People will come to Christ. People will become Christians. Um, we are all sinners, all of us, me included. You know, I'm, none of us are perfect. So we make mistakes. And, um, you know, just because someone claims to be a Christian or has newly come to Christ does not mean that they are going to be perfect. So if there are situations like that where you are concerned, just because they become a Christian doesn't mean that they are safe and we need to we need to be aware of that and proceed with caution um, I think that's just healthy now, Shelley said he may see something you do not I would listen but you can still pray for him exactly exactly and you know what that's a really good I'm glad you brought that up Kelly's got good insight I mean Shelley's got good insight um, Sometimes we are too close in our situations or so absorbed in our situations or just so plain plum exhausted that you're not seeing the forest through the trees. And sometimes we need to take the advice of others or step away and, and get a clearer picture. And I think that's really important um, that we do that when we feel ourselves at this point of depletion and... Um, just total exhaustion and you feel like you can't go on I mean I know so many people so many people reach out to me all the time asking for prayer and are in such low places and such bad places and not that they're gonna harm themselves but it's just hard to see the light of day. it's hard to see anything good when you're in these places that it's good that you have people you can bounce things off of I am blessed to have a family that I can communicate with I am blessed that I have amazing, amazing prayer warriors that I can bounce things off of. And, and you know, it's important to have people in our lives without the drama that are true friends, true Christian souls that love you for who you are and are willing to share their advice with you and, and share what they are seeing um, in an effort to, to help us walk things out. And, you know, I am I do that often with many of the people that reach out to me. But I am very blessed to have those people in my life. You know, I had so much on my plate over the last three weeks that all required my time, that were all new things to me, that all required perfection, that all required to be done yesterday. You know, when you're in those moments, it just zaps your brain. It takes it takes everything you got to get these things done. And you know, I was I was always used to being in that position before and you know, always just striving through stuff, but since my illness, I don't have the same endurance and abilities and you know, you get to a point sometimes where you just don't think you're thinking straight. And it's nice to have people that love you and know you and know your personality and know that when you, you say, look, I don't think I'm seeing this straight anymore. What is your perspective? And we love each other enough that they will be honest and not, you know, that we can be honest with one another. I have that blessing with my husband, which is a true blessing to be able to say that to him, what do you honestly think? And that he will honestly answer me and know that I'm not going to get upset because of his thoughts on it because I asked. And I have friends that are the same way. And it is an absolute blessing to be able to reciprocate that 
You know, because there are times we are pushed to the limits and we can't think straight or we are in something so deep that you can't see the forest through the trees and you need to be able to rely on true loving friends. And in your lifetime, you will be fortunate if you have enough to fill two hands worth. One is a stretch most of the time. We are blessed to have quite a few really, really, really good special friends. And, and that in life is a blessing. And that is something that I pray for all of you to have because um, most of the time in life, um, sadly, you know, I, my, my comment about dealing with people and being around people is I live back here by myself. We're selling all these things and I'm dealing with such weird personalities of people that want to purchase our stuff. And it just makes me realize how grateful I am to be here and not have to deal with people. Those of you that deal with people in the general public every day, God bless you. I love you. You have you have better abilities. You are a bigger man or woman than I am. Because after living this way for 10 years, I know I couldn't do it. But, you know, people, sadly, people disappoint. People really, really disappoint. Um, there are so many clicky people in this world that are still stuck. You know, they're in their... 30s to 60s and they're still stuck in that high school pettiness. It's just really crazy. It really saddens me because there's so much to life that's beyond that. So I want to pray that you guys are blessed to have those special people in your life that I am blessed to have. And and to seek them. You know, when you seek, really wholeheartedly seek anything, the more you seek it, the more you bring that to you. And uh, I was fortunate to be seeking good, wholehearted people. And I was blessed with others that were seeking the same. So, you know, there are good people out there. And I don't want you to be disturbed or um, because it's really easy when you are serving others and you are helping others and they take advantage or they mistreat you. Um, it's really easy to say, you know what, for lack of better terms, screw it. I'm done helping people. Because that's not what God wants. But what God wants is us to protect ourselves, but help others. And sometimes it just boils down to just praying for people. You know, you see people in need. You see they need, they need help. There's a lot of drama. You know it's not worth your energy to be involved, but you can pray. And the power of prayer is incredibly huge. And we have been using that all year is just praying and praying for people Pay, praying for those that persecute us praying for those that need help but we can't any longer offer assistance physically you know and and praying for renewal wisdom and strength for ourselves you know we need to seek god before we make decisions and that is a decision regarding anything anything purchases, helping others, jobs that are offered to us, selling our home. You know, we could be praying every night for the money we need, but instead we are praying for the wisdom and the knowledge that we need because we know God will provide the rest. If we are seeking him and seeking his will and seeking his direction, he will take care of everything else. He promises that. And, and that's why that is our focus. Kelly says, have been blessed with some truly loving, caring, prayerful friends. It's the first time in my life that I feel I have true friends. I've always been guarded and sharing because of being hurt by some people. Absolutely a blessing. You know, that it is. That it is. And you know what? I totally get what you're saying. Um, I've been screwed over so many times by people. And it is so hurtful. And, you know, we could allow ourselves that every time that happens to just further pull away. And for a lot of us, that's what we did for portions of our lives. It, it does create being very guarded. And this year, um, for some reason, uh, our family has felt really under attack that way. And... Um, 
in many ways abandoned. And you know what? I truly believe that God, I got to find this too. I shared this the other day. Let me see if I can find. Yep. Sometimes your circle decreases in size, but it increases in value. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes your circle decreases in size, but it increases in value. And that is when God strips us of those that have no value to us anymore and replaces it with great value. And, and that is exactly what Kelly is talking about, that we finally are in a place where we are able to share of ourselves and not have to be guarded. That is one of the most priceless places to be. And to know that no matter what happens in that friendship, there is nothing that is going to break it because God is the one that started it. And that is powerful. And you know what? There are people that come in um, sheep's clothing. Uh, we've experienced those. We've helped those. And they turn around and they just stab you in the back and they screw you over royally. And you know what? Those are the people, those are the, those are, I look at that anymore that God is just blessing me by stripping them away. And I don't lose a lot of sleep over it. I pray for those people, but I realize that that loss is an actual gain in value. And, and like I said, I really pray that you guys are able to find those true loving friends. And it's a shame that there are the clicks and the, the, the weirdness in our churches, and that's why many people don't go to church. But there are good, wholesome people out there. So don't get me wrong. You know, it's scary when you're involved. Like I said, I've been dealing with all these odd people, and it's really, it's really discouraging and, and disheartening. And it's discouraging and disheartening to watch the news. I, I have not watched the news since the early 2000s because it was so depressing and just disturbing to watch. And to see how they turn everything inside out and upside down to get the bad story instead of sharing the good stuff. And, you know, when you learn to walk yourself away from those situations and, and also look at it in the right way that... You know, it's hard when, when people when people are stripped from your life, especially those that you really valued, and when they walk away and, and also, you know, do harmful and hurtful things on the way out, it's really hard on our souls. We're human, we're flesh, and it really does not feel good. It hurts. It makes us question ourselves a lot. Um, that's where that book, um, When You've Been Wronged, um, you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash wronged. That is a book on forgiveness. And you know, it is, it is really, really important that when these things happen to us and we are hurt, that we handle it properly. Because if you don't handle it properly, you will have anger, um, resentment, um, fear of, of reconnecting with other people, um, all those things sneak in there because the enemy just loves such opportunities. So it's important to forgive those that hurt us and, and pray for them, but it's also smart to walk away. And when you can take things and turn them for the good, that you realize that that decrease in your life gave you value back, it makes life a whole lot easier. And learning also, one of the biggest family lessons we have learned this year is, is just walking away from the drama and, and keeping our family core strong. If it does not serve our family and it is causing struggle in our family, then it's not worth our time and energy. And that is where we are at today. Plain and simple. Doesn't mean we can't pray for situations, people. But if it affects our family, then it's not, it's not something that we need to direct our time, our en energy, even our minds to. Um, let me see. Owie. 
Okay. Shelly says, you were there to help me with my daughter's issue. I will always try to be there for you. But that's what we're called to do. And that's just the most amazing blessing is when we can be there for each other through our tough stuff. And girl, you have been there for me a multitude of times. Your insight has been priceless. And that's what it's about. And that's what it, it just gives me goosebumps to know that I am that blessed by so many of you. I am, I am just so blessed to have you in my life and I am so glad I came on here today because I'm telling you, I was just not in a good way. I was just so exhausted and not feeling well. So this has been a blessing and I love you all. Kelly says, God pushes me to not pull away. I did for years, but also was so lonely. Love that saying. I know. And, and you know what? God, just like with Starry, where God was helping her to be a humble receiver. God does all kinds of things, utilizing the Holy Spirit to walk us to new places, to newfound places, to bless us with other people in our lives, to help us to learn to go through the hurts. You know, there are so many hurt people walking on this planet. Um, I, I, I see that the family dynamics that I had to walk away from are a result of some extremely hurting people that that are, are bitter and angry. And you know, there's, there's just so many hurting people. And we've all had to walk through different walks, but it's amazing to see how God nurtures us in, in his special ways, how we need it, and, and how he brings us to these new places, these new levels. It's just amazing. That's why I share what I share with you because God, oh, these last three years have been so amazing. And if you could have been here the day that we both got confirmation to wait and how we both were just like, oh. you know, it's like for anybody else, that news would have been devastation. Because we wanted to sell. We, well, we need, we need to sell. But just to have God speak to us and give us direction, regardless if it's what we want or not, it's just so powerful. And to see God working in each of you and, and helping you through some of these struggles and some of these things that have been lifelong and, and years long and, and seeing you mature in your faith and, and seeing how God is answering prayers for the people on our prayer list because we are joining together and praying for them. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I'm glad I did this today because one of the biggest things we've got to do through this walk is to nurture ourselves and to be good, faithful Christians. Just like that Bible verse said, 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. The more we focus on that through our journey and that we are walking it out and talking it out the way we are called to, we're always going to slip up. None of us are perfect, but if we can continue to do that and to be the good friends, to avoid the, the drama, to avoid the negativity, and to focus on what's most important to us, and that is ourselves and our families. And, and sometimes that may mean walking away from people that are blood, but it may mean that to become the, the Christians that God wants us to be, to be, to walk out our story, to be what we are meant to be. And, you know, it's just like the disciples. They were called to pick up their cross and follow him. That meant dumping and leaving everybody behind. And, and you know, that's what he is calling us to do is to leave our baggage behind, our hurts, our our heartaches, our forgiveness, or our unforgiveness, um, to leave that all behind and to follow him. And when we choose to do that, and when we choose to seek him and his direction over our own desires, thank you, he finally laid down this dog, oh my gosh. He's put miles on in a 10 foot section this week. What a girl will do. <laughs> Anyway, um, 
okay. And Kelly, I love that. I love that. And I'm glad that God is pushing you. Um, you know, we all have such beauty to share. And sadly, uh, a lot of our hurts keep us from being our true selves. And if we can focus on being our true selves, and it's hard. It's hard putting ourselves out there. It is hard trusting new people. It is hard. But when God blesses us with the right people, I, I don't, it's like a wedding dress. You just know when you've got it, when you've got the right one. Same with a house. You guys can maybe relate better to this because I don't think you'd put on a wedding dress, I hope. Um, that you just know when you found that right house um, or that right fishing lure, whatever. You know, you just know. And, and you know when God, God is leading. Um, there is just something so amazing and it's a feeling and it's so amazing when you know you're on the right path. And for the mountain man and I, I think that's why it was just such an amazing feeling to know that he has given us direction and that we are on the right path. And you know, sometimes you can seek those answers for a long time and not get them. We've been waiting three years here in this situation and we've been pushing all year. And so hold on tight. He's working all the time, a million different ways in the background that you can't see it. Kelly says, I feel pity for those now instead of anger and hurt. It's a process. You know, when you go through um, having to leave people behind or having been hurt by others, there is a great healing process there, almost as if a, a death has occurred. And I think I saw, was it you? Let me just see. Angela says, I don't watch the news either. And Shelly says, I am so glad that you feel safe now. It's a shame that people can be so negative and hurtful. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it was you, Kelly. I am rereading the book, When You've Been Wronged, and seeing things I missed the first time through. That was what I was just going to say. I bet. I could bet money because the same thing happened to me. The first time I read that, I had a lot of bitterness and a lot of anger towards my family. Um, I was hurt for a long, long time. And a lot of malicious, ugly, nasty things happened. And I knew from early on in my life that forgiveness is a must. So I read that book. I found that book. That book was gifted to me. It ended up on my desk in the way of Moody Radio's... Um, donation uh, mailer that came out and that was the free gift for any donation and that was one of the most priceless returned donations I've ever um, ever given and received because I know I've passed that on to a lot of people I share that book all the time that is the best book on forgiveness I have ever read and the second time I read that the things that bothered me the first time that really resonated with me and were things that I really needed to work on, that anger and that bitterness, I felt the same thing. I felt absolute love in that section of the book and was able to pray for them. And that's rereading that book is such a good thing because it shows you your healing process. It shows you what you've overcome. And it may show you what you still need to work on because it's a process. It is a, an absolute process. Walking away from my family was as if they died. I had to heal through that. But it is a really awesome feeling when God brings you to the other side of that. And you can be whole. And you can be rid of those hurts and those fears. And you no longer look at them the same way. And that you can pray wholeheartedly for them and feel good about it. Shelly says, I do listen to the new... I don't, do not listen to the news either. They only go on about negative things. I do remember they used to mention good stuff also, but not anymore. No. No, not at all. And things get so twisted that people don't even know truth from the lies. They can't even discern anymore. You know, those of us that are connected with Jesus are at least able to discern the baloney from the, you know, from the truth. But that's another scary thing. And I think that's why I'm so affected by people anymore is that when you look at society, they don't know right from wrong. They just don't. And, and it's hard also to look at our authority in a lot of cases and be able to trust the police and everything else. And, you know, I have great 
um, love and um, faith in our in our military and in our police but you see things like something just happened recently here that makes makes you start to question you know the integrity of, of some of them out there not all of them I mean there are good wonderful people out there serving us but there are others that are corrupt and giving everybody a bad name it's no different than in anything else but it's just it's just scary to see people not being able to see the forest through the trees there's so much confusion and that's what the enemy wants that's why he's the king of the earth and that's why we need to call him call God we need to call God into the scene and make sure he is present and present in our homes um, I think this is Angela Angela it's so encouraging to see your calm faith in God's purposes in your life even while you struggle dramatically <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I really hesitated to get on here today. Monday was bad. Monday was really, really bad. But today I was just really swollen. But thank you. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because that's what I want. I want to be squeezed and Jesus to come out. And I was being squeezed. It's supernatural to be calm when facing losing your home. I'm praying for you. Thank you. Yeah, it is. But you know... That's why I want you guys to get where I am, even if it's a process, and it is. It's a true process to bring your faith to this level, that you have such faith in him for the outcome that you're willing to walk through some of the roughest stuff, just knowing that, you know, he's he's got it. And people, I know, I know there are people that think we are nuts, and and that's okay. Seeing his hand, seeing how he moves in his timing, seeing how he is constantly blessing us, seeing how he strengthens us even in our weakest places, seeing how he blesses us with people that have supernatural insight and just deep love for us and that we can have for them. You know, you can see, you can see God carrying us through this. And that was our hope. And that was my hope. I just felt so driven. This is my second year of being live every Wednesday. And I, I only missed a day or two um, in the process. And like I said, live video is very intimidating to me. But I can see God's hand in it. And I can see how he is moving. And I want... I want to be transparent. I want to be on here even when it hurts because I know then is when you will see him. I know that, that that's when he will be most present. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for your prayers. It means a lot. We should do a book reading together. You know what's really funny, Angela? The one guy I follow, um, it's the Quote of the Day show by Sean Croxton. They are so incredibly powerful and his his shows are basically clips of other people's um speeches and different things but they're really powerful and he started doing a book reading club and you know I would I would really love to do that I need to make it through this season first <laughs> I'm afraid to commit myself to anything more right now especially till the mountain boy is off in school but I would love that, and that is in my radar. So stay tuned for that because it would be really powerful. Because again, what's really unique when you are reading a book or even doing a devotional with other people, God, it's just like the Bible. God gives people what they need when they read it. And the book is the same, that everybody's insights will be different. So we can feed upon each other. We can learn from each other. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Plus, we're all at different levels. So reading the book, for example, Wronged, would get a lot of different feedback and insight. And that's where we can help each other. Um, and I would, I, I would really love to do a devotional. I've been really drawn to that. And I've been really drawn to do a couple's devotional, too. I'd really like for the mountain man and I to do something um, we've really thought about doing one on marriage. 
So there is a lot in the works and we will soon be empty nesters. So things will change here that my time will be a little different. Um, we're walking into a brand new season here. So, but thank you. I'm glad to know you're kind of reaffirming that I'm on the right lines. Shelly says, I hope you are finding our fellowship very healing. You need our dose of your faith weekly. You know I do. And you know what? I feel so much better. I feel like I can just breathe different. You know, I, my walk I did a little earlier, we were getting stoned for the neighbor where, that um, Glenn has been working at. And I went up there also to get pictures of the mountain man's work. He did a porch up there and put a railing all the way around it like he did here. And I said to him, I said, you know, I feel I wasn't going to go live. I was almost almost at 1030 was going to nix it. And I thought, well, maybe if I go outside for a while or maybe I can do my devotions live. And I, I walked up there and I said, you just need to pray for me. I said, I know I'm not in this place very often. I mean, it's very rare that I am in this place. Um, in the nine, ten years we've been here, I've probably been in this place one other time. Just worn out. And I'm feeling very renewed and I'm very glad I did this. And yes, it's like taking in a, it's like you guys are giving me your breasts. It's just really awesome. So I am glad I came on here and I love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Kelly says it's on all accounts you mentioned, seeing the healing and also seeing areas I need to heal yet. Yeah, it's really great. Ah, this dog. Yeah, it's really, honestly, that is one of the best books ever to reread and another book that you guys need to read is the power it's uh the power of positive thinking and you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash power of positive that man was so ahead of his time i'm i think i'm halfway through that book i read it at night and fall asleep to it but I, that book is so highlighted up and um really one of the best things we can do for ourselves is just constantly focusing on our own healing the more we heal ourselves from our hurts and our struggles and our health, um, the better we can help other people. And that is what I've learned over these last three years. I was so frustrated being flat on my back. And I was saying such nasty things to myself three years ago. You're old, you're useless, you're ugly. I mean, my face was just swollen all the time. And I just felt awful all the time. And you know, it was such an amazing place to be sitting on that couch that day and have God say to me, I'm going to use you where you're at. I want you right where you are. And from that day on, I realized that my healing would enable me to be a better light to other people and that it was important for people to have the faith that God was giving me. Because before my surgery, I laid in that bed and I did not... Think that I was going to make it to my surgery and quite honestly the doctor said had I not done all of the self-diagnosing that I did when the medical system failed me I wouldn't be here today and he gave me that comfort he touched my hand that night and he made all of that heat in my body go away and he gave me the doctor I needed to go to and he gave us what we needed to get to Georgia when we had nothing and he gave us what we needed while we were there. You know, I'll never forget the mountain man standing in that pharmacy with me saying to me, you made it all this way on faith. Why are you worried about a piddly $900 that we don't have and concerned that he won't provide? And sure enough, he did. And he used my own words against me. <laughs> so... You know, our healing and, and our faith, the stronger that we grow in that, and the more that we are able to overcome and self-heal ourselves, the more powerful and beneficial we are for his ministry. Ha! Hi. Don't you dare be rude. I've taught you better than that. <laughs> I'm being quiet. Oh, you're just being quiet. All right, all right. I want to show you guys this. This is what I wanted to show you that was, I didn't have out on the porch with me. I, oh, let me see if you can see it. Okay, this is a beautiful rock. I think it's jade. I found it in Wyoming when we were working on a job down there. It's not polished, but I have it sanded down. And I'm going to use, this got a little tarnished. This is a silver loop 
that's going to go on a chain and then this piece will it'll hang on here once I polish it but I love this green and it is interlaced with all kinds of different colors of um, stone and it started out just like this this is another piece of rock that I have it's I'm not sure exactly what this one is but it's a perfect oblong oval type well rectangular type stone and I'm going to start sanding this one down and polish it so this will be one of the next stones that I put on a necklace or some probably necklace but that was what I did on Sunday and doing Sunday was so great I worked on my basket I drew I was drawing um, I was making some cards and working on my jewelry learning how to do new things it just felt so good I know I missed a couple of things here let me see uh, Kelly says, can you share the pictures? Would love to see Glenn's beautiful work. I ended up not taking pictures while I was up there um, because there was a lot of stuff in the way. I decided I'm gonna go back up there when he has everything cleaned up and get pictures and then I will share it. It just looks beautiful. Um, he put a wrap porch on the cabin up there and, and his railing and it just, it just totally transformed this place. It's beautiful. It's a really nice comfort spot and they are such dear friends. So I'm excited that we were able to do that for them and they blessed us as well with the work. Um, let's see. Shelly says hello to Austin. Hi. <laughs> and Shelly says, I was just thinking that myself. So she was replying to Kelly. Okay. And, oh, Tammy says beautiful. That will be beautiful when it's done, Shelly says. And Chad is back. I'm glad you're back. Are you going back out? Yep. You going to do a live video with me then later sometime and share your story? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Are you yeah, leaving your? Uh oh. All right. Are you leaving your boy in here to keep mine occupied? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So guys, this has been an awesome time. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. This was very healing for me. I hope that in the process, you guys have gained something from it too. God is good, and I I try to follow His lead all the time. I could. F as much as I wanted to cancel out at 10.30, I felt him nudging me, so I took the time to walk away, get some fresh air, and I'm really glad I, I did, and, and that he prompted me to do this. And, and thank you all for your love and your prayers and, and your renewal. You guys are awesome. So with that being said, I am going to say a prayer for us all. And uh, if anybody needs prayers, please list them in the comments below or private message me. I've, I've, oh, and you can also email us now at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. Austin is actually back home, Angela. Um, he was in an apartment for a while and um, he moved back home and is living in his camper. But we are going to be selling his camper here soon because he is heading off to school for the next 18 plus months. And uh, we are selling all his things uh, that he doesn't need for that time frame. And, and then when he finishes school, he will have his funding to be able to purchase himself a nice vehicle and get himself situated um, either back on our homestead where we are or in his own place or on his own land. He's got lots of great dreams for himself. So this is a huge door opening for him. God has opened that door for him wide open. And that's what we've asked God to do if it's not meant to be to close the doors. So unless I tell you otherwise, right now he will be leaving in the next four weeks or so here. And, and he will be heading to Washington. So not too far away. Still driving distance, thank goodness. But it'll be an, an interesting experience for him and for us. So, but uh, very proud of him. Did Austin get his answer yet? Not quite yet. Um, soon, <laughs> soon. But uh, God has been opening doors and helping us sell things here, so that helps. We're trying to get everything cleaned up here at the property and out of the way that we don't need. And then we're going to uh, move all the MacGyver things that we have up to our new building site so that if the house does sell over winter, eh, we don't have to dig things out of the snow. So it'll be pretty much all cleaned up. All we have to do is load up what we've got packed and pack what we live with every day and call it good. So it's been really nice to get down to the bare minimum. 
Talk about minimalistic. It feels so incredibly good. So incredibly good. And that's what we are doing. And then to be able to live in a tiny house moving forward will just be an absolute blessing. Uh, that again, people don't understand, but I'll tell you what, living with less is so much more. Uh, so many less holds on you as a person and it just enables you to be free and creative, which is, I believe, what God wanted us to be. And it's so amazing. So, so amazing. So pick up your cross and follow him because where he is leading you is amazing. Amazing. As your faith strengthens, you will find so much peace and joy and comfort in trusting him. And you won't be afraid to trust him. There is no fear here or worry. Um, just tiredness. <laughs> but thank you. You guys have thoroughly renewed me today. I love you all very much. So I'm going to say a prayer for us all here. Papa, I just thank you for your love and your mercies and just loving us even when we are weak and just nothing but a mess. You love us no matter what, and that's the amazing blessing of it all. And you are so faithful, and your word is so powerful. And I'm just so grateful that that is my stronghold, and that is where I get my strength and my renewal from, is not only finding time with you, but fellowshipping with others for you. This has been awesome today. Thank you for prompting me to push harder today. Thank you for enabling this to happen. Thank you for the strong internet connection because I'm realizing that I came in from outside and nothing happened. So this is awesome. You are so good. You are so powerful. And I just ask that you be with everyone present, all those that are watching the replay. Just strengthen and renew them. Help them to gain something from today's live. Help them to find their strength in you. Help them to not fear following you. So many people are so afraid to share their faith and to uh, wear it on their sleeve. But man, that's really where it's at. And you keep showing us that and you keep providing in that place. And it's just amazing. And I want everyone to have what we have. You know, we might be walking out a terrible, stressful journey, but your presence is so powerful and you are so visibly present every day blessing us in so many ways and we're so thankful thank you today for blessing me with these people i am so blessed to have such amazing friends such amazing christian friends that there is just something so powerful in being able to be who i am 100 percent and not have to be afraid to be who I am. And that's how we should all be living. We shouldn't have to guard ourselves. We shouldn't have to be uncomfortable in other people's presence. And when you, we find that here on this earth, that is so powerful. And I am so thankful for the Christian people you have sent our way. And I am so thankful to be able to return the favor and pray for these people and call them friends. Just uh, bless everyone and help them, strengthen them, heal them where necessary, and just give them renewal today too as they've blessed me. Thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives. Thank you for the Holy Spirit filling us and guiding us and showing us direction. May we all be in tune with that and hear your voice and feel your promptings because there's so much power in that place. Thank you for your love, your mercies, and your grace, and thank you more so for what you're going to do in each of our lives. I love you, and I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay. Now I need glasses again because I can't see the screen. Shelly says, slowly working towards being minimalistic. It's a process. You know that. You know that. Uh, but Mountain Boy and I were working in his bedroom to clear that out. I did take a before picture, but I didn't take the after. It's definitely cleared out a lot. I think we moved six huge totes out of there. We put all his boxes into totes so that it stays protected. And uh, I have to admit, 
going in that room was very overwhelming. Part of the overwhelm is that I have things in there that need to be packaged up, but I don't have money for totes. So I have to wait to get that dispersed because we're trying to get everything into the shed and label, but we're also trying to do it in an organized fashion because the problem is now that all those things I packed up and rearranged four different times in there that we figured we would just have to pack in a loading truck or a trailer are now having to be dug through for winter clothing, hunting clothing, um, different things for the season. So it's a little hard. I can't, I want to, I have to keep it organized so that that doesn't get dug up and become this big mess again because we need to know where our things are. So it is a process. It is definitely a process and it is overwhelming. And I think the reason that was so overwhelming for me the other day is I was finally done. That was the only room that we had left to do and it was, I just didn't, <laughs> I was also exhausted. We did that Tuesday. We were supposed to do it Monday and I was just too beat to do it. So Tuesday we did it and I was a little more energetic, but not much. <laughs> so let me see here. We have Amen and praise God from Kelly. Courtney says, amen. Have a blessed week. Love and hugs. Exactly, sweet friend. Love you too. Hope you're feeling better. And we are praying for you, girl. We are praying for you. No anxiety. Just healing. And Tammy and Shelly say, amen. Angela says, we have so much stuff. It's so overwhelming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're collectors. We just are. And it's funny, you know, watching as we've had everything uh, really down to the minimalness that we wanted and the seasons changing or things having to come back in. It's like when there's stuff cluttered or there's a pile, it's like, get it out of here. It's got to go. I don't like it. It's got to go. You know, so when you get to that point, but it is hard. It's a process going through all the stuff, but I'll tell you what, man, what a rewarding feeling it is to get to this place. And I know that there'll be even more stuff that'll go once we are in our new place, uh, when we know what we don't need anymore. Uh, but I'm really finding great joy in all of my craft things and my leather things. So if we are here for winter, I may get my grandfather's treadle sewing machine going and do some leather projects too. Because my basket is just about finished. I got the handle on it yesterday. I just need to do like two or three more rows around it and finish it off and then it is good. And what's really fun is um, the mountain man thinks it's a gift for somebody else. It initially was. But my mountain man makes me such amazing things and gifts me with such amazing things. And I love to do that for him, but I haven't been able to do that in a while. So this basket is for him to put on his dresser. So I'm really excited to finish it and gift it to him. I might do that next Wednesday live while we're on here. So let me see here. Uh, Courtney, you are most welcome, sweet girl. We got your back. We're praying. Kelly says, now that I've started to declutter, I'm finding more and more I can give away and be rid of. I know. Isn't it fun? I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm, I know. I'm finding the same. And I have a couple things I'm going to go through still. If you ladies like doilies and linens, let me know because that'll be my next task. Those three, I have my hope chest and then I have three uh, suitcases over here. They look really pretty. They're full of linens and uh, doilies and I might just start lightening that load. I have a little bit of a fetish there. Shelly says, the more I get rid of, the better it feels. Doesn't it though? Oh my goodness, it just feels so good. This is another project I'm gonna work on. My table here is a light oak color that you have seen, and I showed it to you with the Singer sewing machine legs on it. I'm going to sand this down, and I'm going to stain it that dark color that we used on the railings. Um, I'm just driven to make it dark. I don't know why, but, and Glenn's like, well, you know once it's dark, you can't go light again. I'm like, I know. I think I really would like it dark. So I'm going to do that. I'm just not sure when. I, I would have really liked to do it this week, but I had no energy to do it, so <laughs> I'll have to wait. Kelly says, we need a spinning lesson or two, maybe. Facebook chat. Oh, that would be so cool. Yes, 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 yes. I want to learn to uh, spin in the worst way. Because that one of my few next projects, I dug out my knitting bag. I need to make some hot pads, and then I want to start working on our socks. So that will be the next thing. Courtney says, we'll let you know what the results say. They are going to be perfect. I know they are. God is, I believe God is going to heal you, sweet girl. So yes, please do let us know so we can all celebrate with you. And guys, before I end up on here longer, I already prayed, but we could chat all day, couldn't we? I appreciate you guys. This was very renewing. 
I'm gonna go back for a walk up to my man and maybe get some pictures and just get some fresh air now and just go airplane mode. I love you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you guys are as, I hope that I'm as helpful to you as you guys are to me, let's put it that way. So be blessed and pick up your cross and follow him and just put your faith and trust in him because guys, that's where it's at. Uh, we would be in a very, very different place if God wasn't part of our household. I know that um, because this has been a really rough spot, but God is present and God is leading and carrying. Thank you, Kelly. Love you and hug the men folk from all of us. We will. Love you. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great week. And I will see you next Wednesday for sure. Maybe before if the mountain boy and I get, if he gets his news and we uh, decide to do our video. So take care. God bless and love you. <laughs>